Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and it's been two weeks since Apple has released the developer beta for iOS 16, and I have kind of foolishly installed it on my primary device, which means that I have been knee deep using iOS 16 for all of this time. And I have a lot of thoughts on Apple's next major iOS update and why I think it's going to be people's favorite update in years and how it's actually changed the way that I have not only used my phone, but also other Apple devices. Kind of like how Skillshare taught me how to plan, storyboard, storytell, and edit my videos differently through their wide array of classes. And perhaps there's no one better to learn from than one of the pioneers of tech YouTube, Marquez Brownlee, with his exclusive Skillshare class on YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. This class gives you a complete breakdown of not only how to shoot your videos, but also what goes behind the scenes of making a tech YouTube video, including, of course, storytelling, scripting, writing, and something I'm trying to work on is how well you capture your audience's attention within the first 10 seconds. And the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up through my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, so in my last video on iOS 16, I did a detailed breakdown of lock screen customization. So I'll try not to repeat myself too much and if you want a good breakdown of this new feature well check out that video here I really think that people are going to love lock screen customization and it's why I think that iOS 16 is just going to like break the records of people installing it right away when it's released. But instead of talking about how to do lock screen customization, I wanted to talk more about how this lock screen change has actually impacted the use of my phone and my Apple Watch. So not only do I like the iOS 16's new lock screen customization to make my phone look cool, and, and I like the fluid animations of some of the custom uh, lock screens that Apple has set up, but I primarily like it for now letting us put more data on the phone's lock screen. So before iOS 16's new lock screen customization, I would always feel the need to use data heavy Apple watches with uh, lots of complications with preferably four or more data sets that I could look at. I always wanted things like the date, the weather, and my activity rings constantly viewable at a glance. And I became paranoid that if I didn't use a watch face with multiple complications, I would miss things like a calendar event or I wouldn't know that it was about to rain or that I would miss my move or stand goals for that day. So having that always visible was a must for me to help calm my anxiety. And even though the Apple Watch has a lot of really cool looking watch faces, most of them limited how many complications you can put on those watch faces. And I never really used them for a long period of time because of that. Well, now that's changed since installing the iOS 16 beta and watchOS 9, because a lot of my frequently used watch complications can be placed directly on the phone's lock screen, and with just a simple lift or tap of my phone, those complications are glanceable without me needing to go into individual apps and bypassing the need to even unlock my phone. So now I take all of those common widgets that I used to put on my Apple Watch and I put them directly onto my phone's lock screen, which has allowed me to use more visual faces like the new astronomy face, which I really like in watchOS 9. And I never feel like I'm missing out on uh, this additional information knowing that the source of that information is going to be somewhere that is also easily accessible. It's also changed how I customize my phone beyond the lock screen with widgets. Again, I always like having this information viewable, so my main home screen would always have something like the weather widget. But now that this information is viewable on the lock screen, well, I can now replace that widget with something more useful, like my calendar events or reminders to reduce redundancy. That coupled together with the new live screen activities on the bottom of the lock screen, screen where you get this persistent view of things like timers has really made the lock screen of the phone much more information dense and much more useful. And it can even display very important information like your Starbucks order progress. I mean, that's a top priority. Like, have you ever went into Starbucks early after doing your mobile order? Like you did it from the car because you don't want to talk to anyone. And then your drink isn't ready yet. So you're standing awkwardly at the checkout counter for like 10 minutes praying they didn't forget to make your venti americano. I mean, it's such a simple drink. Why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? It, it should have been out by now. Are you really that busy? Well, now in iOS 16, I could just glance at my phone and make sure my order is ready before I, uh, before I walk in to the mobile order station. 
I have problems. I should also mention how much easier getting into my phone has been since upgrading to iOS 16 because Face ID has been really, and I mean really improved, probably the biggest improvement we have seen to uh, the iPhone's Face ID system yet. And this is all coming through a software update because it now works in landscape mode. And let me give you a little scenario on how this is useful with a common scenario I think we all go through. And that is when we first wake up in the morning, we go to grab our phone, our heads are still laying sideways on the pillow. We go to look at the phone and we probably are holding our phone sideways. So face ID doesn't register your face and it doesn't unlock. Yeah, we've all been there, right? Well, in iOS 16, face ID now works in landscape mode and it's such a big improvement. So much so in fact that there's very little angles that face ID doesn't work at anymore because you'd basically have to have your iPhone completely upside down for it to misfire. It's such a huge improvement to Face ID and it makes the experience flawless. Speaking of improvements that are near flawless, mail. Yeah, email, the most exciting feature on a device. It's very revolutionary and it's definitely the app that all the young kids are using. All right, seriously though, I unfortunately have to spend a lot of time in mail apps. I don't enjoy it, but I do spend a lot of time emailing clients and uh, sponsors, stuff like that. So mail is kind of infamous for being behind and lacking features and also having terrible search compared to other email apps. And I've kind of always just used mail as my client because it's the native program on every Apple device I use, like down to my Apple Watch. Uh, so that's primarily why I use it, not that it's a great app, and I'm sure a lot of people are the same way. You're just using it because it's on your phone, or you're probably using something like Gmail, but for better or worse, I have been sticking with the regular mail client. Well, thankfully, if you're like me and use mail, iOS 16 features some pretty big updates for this app with scheduled sending, remind me, undo send, and my favorite feature, improve search. I cannot tell you, well, actually I can tell you, just how a few weeks ago, I was so frustrated searching for an old client email that I could not find with the built-in mail search. I knew the email was there somewhere, I literally accessed it a few days ago, but no matter what I searched, I could not find it. I basically just had to scroll and scroll and scroll through my impossibly long email list before I found it. Thankfully, the new search in iOS 16 seems to be really improved. And now whenever I search for a mail, at, at least with the two weeks I've been using it, I have been finding it, and it does a much better job of finding relevant mail tied to the search term you use and not random emails that it just seemed to pull out of nowhere. And it even includes a nice highlight of the search term directly in the email for spotting them quickly at a glance. And while I hope I won't have to use features like undo send, I am glad that they are in the mail client. That feature also makes its way to the new editing features in messages, where if you send a message that maybe you didn't mean to send, or maybe after a few minutes of clarity, you wish you didn't send it, you can unsend those messages in iOS 16, or you can even edit them to fix common errors or embarrassing typos. And even in my short period of using iOS 16, I have been editing a lot of messages with people that I know are running the iOS 16 beta, because just a warning, if they're on an older version of iOS, you will not be able to unsend or edit your message. I might have to save that for the uh, eventual tips and tricks video when iOS 16 launches. I might have to tell you to, you know, as a tip, get, get an old iPhone SE, don't upgrade the OS, and uh, you know, no one will ever be able to edit a message or, or undo send it. You'll be able to see whatever anyone sends you. They'll think they have the security, but they won't. You'll have all the power. I should not. With, with, with great power comes great responsibility. Do not abuse that feature. I think we're, we squared that off, right? We're clear? Okay, okay. Another big change that really impacted how I use my iPhone is dictation. Before, dictation was treated more as a separate mode on your keyboard. So you usually would either dictate a message into the keyboard or you would type it out. Well, now dictation is kind of treated like an additional part of the native keyboard experience not a separate mode. So what I mean by this is whenever you press the dictation button, it enables dictation and the iOS keyboard does not disappear. And you can even type on the keyboard as you're dictating to it. Even after entering text, the dictation still remains active. So you can continue speaking to enter additional text and dictation will now remove ums and ahs. I need that for my videos. I'm, I'm an, an on all the time if there's no script. And even uh, it'll add punctuation. So no more ending your sentences with 
Question mark? Yeah, I do that all the time too. So I just need like Apple's uh, A16 chip to like integrate into my brain and uh, it'll solve most of my issues. I'll still have trouble with the uh, Starbucks order though. I, I don't think I'll ever get over that. Regardless, putting dictation as an extension of the keyboard is an ingenious move and it's made me use this feature so much more than I used to. Another big change that has impacted how or what I expect my phone to be capable of is Apple's new auto detection of subjects in images. Through the power of machine learning, iOS 16 now lets you hold your finger over a subject in a photo and it will automatically select the subject and remove the background. Now it's not perfect, and on more complicated images, it will definitely mess up, but it's been good enough on most images where I've even used a few of these to generate some of my thumbnails on the channel, where before I'd have to use a more complicated program like Photoshop or a background image removal site. So sometimes it's good enough to use professionally, and other times, well, listen, if you send it to your friends or family, they're probably not gonna care that it's not a 100% perfect crop out. And, and listen, the Greg memes, they're here, okay? If you want to send Greg to all your friends out of context, I won't say no. Like, what would they do if you just sent them a random photo of me like this? What, what would your friends say? What would your family say? If you actually do it, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what your friends or your family said. Maybe I'll pin your comment, I don't know. That's a challenge to my Greg's Gadgets viewers. To the Gadgeteers. Uh, that's not the official name. We're still trying to come up with the, with the official name. Honestly, you made it this far into the video, so I'll just give you a little secret. Uh, if you send me something funny, I'll probably pin it. All right, overall, there's just a lot more in iOS 16 that refines the iPhone's user experience. Things seem more well thought out, like moving notifications closer to where your hand actually rests rather than at the top of the display on these really gigantic phones, and realizing there's more utility to be squeezed out of other areas of your phone. And I'm actually surprised how good of an update iOS 16 has been overall. There's a lot of features that I actually ended up using more than I expected, and I am very happy so far with this beta. And I think a lot of you are going to enjoy this update a ton when you get access to it this fall, or when you can, or when you get access, or if you're brave enough, or if you're brave enough or foolish enough like me when you get access to the public beta next month. All right, but so far, that's been my experience on the iOS 16 beta after two weeks. If you have questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you like this video, come on, give me a like. Uh, if you wanna see more of my channel, I don't know why you would at this point, but you can subscribe for more. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Unless I'm still waiting for that Starbucks order. That Starbucks order is gonna haunt me. I want my venti americano.